The second other major method that we want to look at is called national income. If you recall from what we learned about the three approaches for coming up with the GDP, we say that we can come up with GDP from the expenditure approach, product approach, and income approach. So which means that we can come up with the GDP from adding up the income of all the agents in the economy. And that's exactly what we want to do in here, that we want to come up with the national income from adding up all the payment to all the individuals in the economy. So then in here, what we do is that we define the national income as the summing up of the compensation of employees, proprietor's income, rental income, corporate profit, net interest, which is the business payment from firms to individual minus the interest paid by individuals, plus the net business current transfer payments, the current surplus of government enterprises, and the taxes on imports and production. So how to think about the definition of the national income as the payment to all the agents in the economy, which is if we want to cons be consistent with what we learn about how to come up with the GDP using the income approach, we say it needs to be the payment to all the factor of production. So now let's begin with the first term called compensation of employees. This is the payment to the people who got hired. Therefore, this type of income is more like the income to labor. So you can think about it as the wages. The second component we want to look at is net interest. It is the business payment for firm to individual minus the interest paid by to individuals. So from the economy's perspective as a whole, it's more like the business paid interest from firms to individuals. So therefore, you can think about it as the payment for capital owner. The next term we want to look at is the rental income. You can think about it as the payment for the land owner, which is the rent. Finally, the fourth component that we want to look at is the corporate profits. From the wording itself, it is the profits. So it's the payment to the entrepreneurship. So then the compensation of employees, the rental income, the corporate profit and net interest is quite straightforward as part of the national income. Once we think about how to come up with the GDP using the income approach. How about all the other terms? The first term we want to look at is the proprietor's income. So what is proprietor's income? You know that when someone is a proprietor, that person owns the business, that person also works for himself or she herself. And then that person may have some machines to do the work. For example, you open up a bakery and then you make bread, you use machines, and then you have the store of the bakery. Then after you receive all the payments from selling the bread, you are going to pay some of the spending for getting the floors, for getting the electricities. Other than that, you are going to have some left and that will all goes to your pocket. And so for that, remaining part, it not only includes the profit, but also the payment to the time you spend on making the bread. It can also be the payment to the machines that you use. So that is more like the return to the capital that you have. Therefore, we say that for the proprietor's income, it includes not only the payment to labor, but also to capital and also to the entrepreneurship. Therefore, this term, the proprietor's income, includes the wages, the interest, and also the profit. So up to this point, we have talked about the couple items of the national income, and we already can sort it and map it to the concept that we know when we want to come up with the GDP from the income approach. So what are the remaining components of the national income? Well, the 
two components we want to look at is the current surplus of the government enterprises and the other is the tax on imports and production. So in here, when we are looking at the national income, we admit that there in fact have the government in the economy and that operates. And the government can have income as well and contribute it to the national income. The government can make profits and therefore the current surplus of the government owned enterprises will be part of the uh, national income. Other than that, we can regard the tax on import and production as the government income. So we also need to include these two terms into the national income. So the last term of the national income that is left in here is the net business current transfer payment. Those are the payments made by the business to the households in form of like gifts and it is not in form of the wages or tax, but it is the payment from the business to the household. So the example for those kind of payments include the charity donations and the insurance payment. And so it is as a gift and it also is part of the national income, but it doesn't count as the wages or the taxes, but it is someone receive it as a payment. So that belongs to part of the national income. And so we need to include that. So then what is the relationship between national income and the previous national income measurement that we have been talking about, which is the GDP and GMP? Well, to begin with, we said that the concept of national income is adding up all the payments to all the factor of productions. So ideally, the total income need to be equal to the total production. Therefore, it need to be similar to GDP or GMP. But given that when we are computing the data or collecting the data from different sources, they turn out to have some discrepancies. Given that there are some dis discrepancies, we will call that statistical discrepancy. But other than that, what will be the concept that is closest to the national income? Is it GDP or GMP? So then in here we argue that the national income is closer to the concept called net national product. What is NMP, the net national product? It is a concept very close to the GMP. So what we have is that GMP is the GDP plus the net factory payment from abroad and it equal to the net national product plus the depreciation which will then equal to the GMP. So in the GMP, the G is gross which it doesn't take out the depreciation but the NMP is the net national product and given that it take out the depreciation, so then the NMP and the GMP, the difference is the depreciation. So then why the concept of the national income is closest to the NMP? That is because when we are talking about the national income, we are talking about the payment or the income to all the factor of production of the nation. Given that, when we are talking about the GMP, we say we are talking about the production of the national owned factor of production. So both of them are talking about the payment to the factor of production. Therefore, the national income has the concept that is closer to GMP than GDP. But the concept of GMP is still slightly different from the concept of national income. That is because when we are talking about the GMP, we add up our production that is by the national owned factor of production. Therefore, when we are counting how much goods that is produced, in fact, we did not take into account the depreciation. However, when we are distributing the payment we receive for the goods that we made, in fact, we need to take into account the depreciation and pay the remaining part to the labor, to capital owner, to landlord, etc. 
Therefore, when we are talking about the national income, it doesn't include the depreciation because it's the where out, it's not the income of the nation. However, when we are talking about the GMP, it doesn't count the depreciation of the machines. So then we introduce the term that is called NNP in here, which is the net national product, it, which take out the depreciation. But then still, the concept of the NNP, even though it's close to the concept of national income, they are not exactly the same because the data are collected from different sources. Therefore, there will be some statistical discrepancy between the national income and net national product. Therefore, we call that the net income equal the net national product plus a statistical discrepancy. So the concept of the net national product is close to the national income. However, in practice, given that the data collected for NMP and national income are from different sources, it's impossible they turn out to be exactly the same when we add up the national income versus when we add up the national production. Therefore, we need to add a term in here, which is called the statistical discrepancy to equate them. So then that is the relationship of the national income versus the other measurements that we talked about earlier. So then the next other measurement that we want to talk to talk about is called the private disposable income and government net income. For the private disposable income, we abbreviate it as PDI, and for the government net income, we abbreviate it as GNI. So then what is the components or what is the private disposable income that we look at? So from the name of the private disposable income, we know it is the income that the household can spend. So the household does receive the income. So we call it the private sector income. Once the private sector receives the income, that is not the total amount the household can spend because the household need to pay taxes. So other than that, sometimes the government has the transfers to the household. In that case, the household are going to have more to spend than the income they receive. So then we need to add that in. So the private disposable income is the private sector income minus the taxes plus the transfer. So then is there any other components inside the private sector income? It turned out that the private sector income equals the GMP plus the interest they receive from the government. And then for the other term, we still minus the tax and plus the transfer. And that is the private disposable income. So then how about the government net income? The government net income will be the total tax that the government uh, collected. But then if the government pays the transfer, then the government net income will become less. Other than that, if the government have debt and then they pay the interest, it also reduces the government net income. So then we in here we define that the government net income equals the taxes minus the transfer minus the interest that pay to the private sector. So then what will be the add up of the private disposable income and the government net income? Given that the private disposable income equals the GMP plus the interest minus the tax plus transfer and the government net income equals the taxes collected minus the transfer minus the interest. Now we can cross out the term that are exactly the same, which is that the household pays the tax, the government received the tax, so they, they got crossed out. For the transfer, the household receives the transfer, the government pays the transfer, it got crossed out again. Finally, the household received the interest and the government pays the interest, so it got crossed out. So at the end, the term left will be the GMP. 
So then we know when we add up the private disposable income and the government net income, we are going to end up to have the GNP. So this concludes the discussion related to the other measurements for the national income.